What's up y'all, it's Brian Keith and I'm back with another video and today we're gonna to be talking about the Real Housewives of Dubai. It is 12 o'clock, I'm sleepy, I have my wine. We're gonna to try to speed through this one, but this was a good episode. This was basically about Lisa. So like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out my flame and if you wanna play with me, you can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, one and securing the bag. I could already start this video off and say that Stanberry and Nina, I am not feeling them. At towards the end of the episode, Stanberry, I wasn't feeling her from jump. Um, and Nina really rubbed me wrong with the whole situation at the end with the waiters. Or the serving staff, so we're just gonna get to it when we get to it. Okay, so we started off at the venue with Lisa. She's at the venue with Chanel, and basically, um, they're gonna have a maternity fashion line. Um, and her fashion line is called Mina Row, and it's like I said, it's a maternity fashion line. And the girls walk in, they all look fab, they look gorgeous. And like she said, she said her maternity brand is the number one maternity brand in the world. I never heard of it, but I mean, girl, I'm, I'm not heard that. <laughs> no shade though. Um, her husband is the CFO and he is full investor of the company. I know that's right. If you're going to marry him, get his money too. <laughs> She basically said that her husband said, I am invested in you. I believe in you, but I really don't believe in your business. This is what he said when they first brought up the idea years ago about coming up with this brand. He didn't really believe in the business, but he believed in her, so he invested in her, which I mean, I mean, I guess you, I mean, as a businessman and a financial investor, I mean, he's making a smart decision, but he's still invested in his wife. So, I mean, I'm not mad at that. Um, so basically in this fashion line, she's going to add the new um, clothing for the maternity line. And also she, she's expanding her line with um, non-maternity um, clothing, just regular fashion, ready to, ready to wear, probably fast fashion stuff. And yeah, I'm excited to see what, what she's going to give. And then basically Chanel, Chanel Ayan, she has her own fashion agency. So the models that were there that was walking, that they were judging and picking certain girls, um, these, <laughs> she was basically there to just like help through the process. Why did she call, she was like, yeah, um, we want plus size models. Why did Chanel say super size? Child, when I tell you, I had to eat that, I had to, eat that laugh because oh, that's not funny it's not funny it's not funny we're not gonna laugh at that but i had to eat it it was like i caught it mm -mm, we're not doing that um but the models look fab i love the fact that these models had their skin tones were from light all the way to deep 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 hues and they all look gorgeous and i was just happy that they're showing um plus size um skinny tall shorter and with lighter skin dark skin is very much inclusive and something that we should see often and it seems very genuine not doing this as a affirmative action type of situation um so stammer and nina go to like some type of hotel like a staycation and this this hotel room was amazing they got a fucking aquarium as a window and got a man diving in the fucking aquarium where the fish is to say welcome to the hotel like who does some shit like that who thinks of something like this and i was just like literally i'm watching the real housewife of making me feel poor oh you're poor texas and um basically growing up as a kid and her parents are basically like country bumpkins and over here the lifestyle that she lived growing up towards the life to the compared to the lifestyle she lives now is like diametrically opposite of what <laughs> like what it is but it's funny because she bring that up and it segues away to the end like the way you treat certain people you really act like you didn't come from humble beginnings but we'll get there Nina brings up the rocky start that she had with Stan Barrier basically like she brought up the situation with Chanel Ion 
um, basically how it's comparing how she had a rocky situation with, with Stanberry and she was like yeah you know um, I had to get to know you and once I got got to know you I feel like we're really cool I feel like if it wasn't for the show y'all really wouldn't be cool y'all really wouldn't be talking and Stanberry's like yeah you mean I just hate small talk and her personality really gives me standoffish it gives me very much I've been on TV been on TV before I'm better than you I have all these followers I have this money I'm married to a man that is 25 years my junior and I'm just like girl do what you gotta do rock the boat uh, rock the cradle and then what does it say so like I said it seems fake like you're you're only friends out of convenience of the show like let's just be real but I don't want to break the fourth wall we see Caroline's daughter Yasmin and Yasmin said she's not feeling Sergio she was like I mean that's your husband cool 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 but he's a kid he's a man child and she was like well you know we're thinking about having kids and she's like hell <laughs> and I'm like because she was like I'm gonna freeze my eggs and I'm just like girl you already have I think she said she had three kids like girl, you already have three kids why do just because he wanted to, you knew the situation that you got in you knew that he was over here 17 years younger than you you're 45 damn near 46 damn near 79 he's 27 going on 18 going on 13 like you knew what you're getting yourself into so just like if he don't have a child he'll have another child if you can't bear have another child girl you can't have another child like what do y'all not get y'all really trying to make something that's not going to happen but I mean, girl, if you want to put your body through it and do what you got to do, girl, give that man what he wants. It's always about a man, child. Segway to Chanel and Lisa. They go off for lunch. They both look fab. And Lisa still um, has that goat. I'm like, child, I thought we were going to make curry out the goat. I thought we were making curry because why do we still have the goat? I didn't. I thought it was like fake. I didn't know it was real that she going to keep the goat. But, child, Okay, Lisa talks about the goat having diarrhea, and at that point, I lost all hope today. So, while in the midst of them talking, Brooke shows up, and everybody's like, Oh, hey, girl, what's up? So, Brooke, she shows up, and she sees the pot of lemons that Chanel brought for her, and I'm just like, What the fuck is going on in here on this day? I don't get it. Okay, cool. You brought a pot of lemons, I guess. It missed, missed the mark. I don't get the the reason or uh, i don't get the reason of you bringing this um pot of lemons like but i guess girl it missed the mark for me sorry but why is when brooks over here putting the pot on the ground if you look in the background literally over her shoulder you see like the waiter he's just like staring at her he's staring at that big old wagon that's stuck on her back i'm just like okay yeah he see it too i know yeah so he brings her a wine. She's like, oh, okay. He bring her. He's like, here you go, madame. Yeah, he was staring. He was trying to shoot his shot. So basically, Chanel and Brooke talk about episode one dinner, the fight that they had, and how they went back and forth. And Chanel said that the reason why she was so triggered is because her husband went to America here for about a month. Her mom, her sister was sick. She was going through all this anxiety. And when Brooks called and told her the messy shit that she told her, that really made her feel some type of, excuse me, that made her feel some type of way. Like, why would she tell me something like that? Da, 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 da. And she was like, my whole thing is this, where I do agree, like, that was messy what she did. But regardless of the fact, you didn't tell her that it made you feel no type of way. She didn't find out until then. Cause Brooks was like, I mean, you went ghost to me. Like after that situation, you didn't say nothing. So how would I know? And I agree, like how would I know you feel some type of way? If you keep your mouth shut, you're not talking to me, which is fine. You can cut me off. We don't have to be cool. That's not a problem. You are you are a grown ass person. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to talk to me. But you're not about to hold me accountable for your feelings. Those are your feelings. If I made you feel some type of way, you didn't say nothing. Like I said, again, that's on you and not on me. Boom. So if you feel some type of way about something that I said and you didn't say nothing about it, girl, talk to Jesus. And I'm period. So Lisa segues and she was like, so did Stanberry say that Chanel was unimportant? And I respect the fact that Brooks was like, no, I said it. Damn. It's I said that, yeah, girl, you probably wasn't important. That's why she didn't come. I respect the fact that she was just honest. Like, it wasn't like any like, oh, did she? Oh, duh, duh. She was just straight honest, straight, no chaser. I was not mad at it because it was just like to the point, like. Yeah, I said it. So they both apologized to each other and Brooks um, 
doesn't get why Stanberry and Chanel aren't as close. Like, what's going on? And Chanel looks like Chanel was like she knew she knew Stanberry the longest, but it's just that they don't vibe. And I mean, you can't. I mean, the you don't feel if you don't vibe with my you don't vibe with them. Hey, Amen. Brooke says, like, why don't you be the bigger person? And <laughs> Lisa was like, girl, bump being the bigger person. We're not doing that. Oh, Stanberry needs to apologize to Chanel. Here's the thing about the being the bigger person. Whoever came up with that, well, why don't you just be the bigger person, was a weak ass bitch. And I get it, like you don't wanna cause waves, you don't wanna cause ripples, but if you do something to me, I'm the type of person that I'ma do it back to you and I'ma do it harder. It might be right, it might be wrong, it doesn't matter, that's just how I am. Take it or leave it. But like I said, whoever came up with Oh, just be the bigger person was a weak ass bitch. You didn't want to be the bigger person. You didn't want to have conflict. You didn't want to confront them. So you did that. I'm not doing that. Anyway, I got time. Weak ass bitch. So Brooks is in her confessional said that Chanel and Lisa, they are conjoined at the hip. One thinks the same thing. The other thinks the same thing. They speak for each other. And she calls them um, Twitter D, Twitter Dom, Thing 1 and Thing 2, and Dumb and Dumber. Child. Y'all, if y'all never taste Matthew Fox, it's really good. So we had this photo shoot for Sarah. And Sarah, she said that she was a fashion designer, but she closed her businesses and invested in tech. And she has over 15 businesses and ranging from like skincare and nfts and like more tech stuff and she opens up about her going bankrupt twice and i'm just thinking like damn the way that she went like she went bankrupt and then ended up in the position that she still is being a multi-millionaire still i mean i mean i'm impressed so like i said before with makeup without makeup sarah is drop dead gorgeous this woman is gorgeous like i i don't want to she's probably the most gorgeous girl on the show like i'm sorry um but the photographer he was fine man was fine i'm sorry period so she's giving um chanel a run for her money and what she doing her poses like she definitely knows her body and her angles of when she's doing her poses and i like the fact that when people do their poses there you have to be confident to really sell the garment and sell your face and sell that sex appeal and she definitely sells a sex appeal so i mean i think her photo shoot was a success i don't know what she was doing this photo shoot for but i know she said her pr team got her two magazine covers in america and europe so i mean go ahead girl okay. well, stanberry and brooks they meet at a med spa and Danbury's face is plastered every fucking where because she's an ambassador. Brooks said that Caroline gets stuff for free because she's an influencer. Ooh, is that shade? How all the other girls are like self-made and they actually work for all of their money. Where that's what I got from it, but made my mom. Oh, Brooks throws major, major shade. Major shade at Sarah and the producers show a before and after because they were like the person that has plastic surgery from head to toe was Sarah Madani and they showed the before and after of Sarah and when I tell you baby night and day difference I said day but that was money well spent. If you're gonna if you gonna get plastic surgery, I am pro plastic surgery. I don't have nothing against plastic surgery. I just hope it looks good. If it looks good, you're eating. I don't mind it at all. But it just like a lot of girls just do too much. A lot of guys just do too much. Where it start looking like ant body. Where it start looking like builder body. Where it start looking like bubble bubble. Ain't nobody got time. But I mean, we all see what Sarah look like. The girl looks gorgeous and it's tasteful. So I mean, I ain't mad at it. Um, Brooks bring up um, her lunch with Lisa and Chanel and Stanberry automatically rolls her eyes. She bring up Lisa wanting Stanberry to apologize and Stanberry calls Lisa a gnat and she needs to mind her business. I'm like... Oh, but you want to really fight. Because <laughs> this reunion is going to be spicy. I'm going to see what this reunion is going to give because these confessionals have been lethal. Because all these confessionals, they have said some lethal shit in these confessionals, but have not said nothing that lethal to any of their faces. The only people that had a conflict was 
Chanel and Brooks. Everybody else has said their stuff in confessionals. We'll see. Confessional gangster. Brooks did the body sculpting and she started freaking out because it's she start it starts zapping her. She's like and Lisa pulls up to her event before like everything happens. I happen that the girls can dress like thank you lisa's putting um on the first ever maternity fashion show in ever in dubai and as a black woman that's something to really be talked about because a lot of people i hate it's always like she's the first black regardless of her race with this she's the first person ever to put on a maternity fashion show in dubai and that's something to really be awarded um, Chanel and Lisa uh, sit and they talk about Stanbury not coming to the fashion show. Stanbury sends Lisa a text and basically it's like, sorry I can't make it and I know you wasn't expecting me. And it's like, bitch, what are you talking about I wasn't expecting you? If I sent you a fucking invite, obviously I was expecting you. Like, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. If I was, like, like girl, if you want to make a moment, like, r please come harder than that. Like, I, I knew you wasn't expecting me. And then you did it in a text message. She's a weak ass bitch. I'm sorry. Like, you're over here talking about, I got a plan for my wedding. Girl, this is your 40th wedding. What are you trying to do? Like, it's, 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 it does not make sense. You already said you've been divorced twice. This is your third marriage. And you, and you already had two weddings with this guy already. So what do you need another wedding for? For what? Oh, okay. So I'm just like, girl, stop. That's why she's, she's tearing my nerves up. I'm, oh, I'm really starting to get over her. Um, Chanel feels bad because she feels like it's her fault and it's like I can see how she feels it's her fault because she has conflict with Stanberry but I mean regardless of the fact if I had a problem with one of my friend's friends I'm still going to support my friend regardless I don't have to sit and talk to you I'm going to walk past you like a ghost I'm like bitch I don't see you but I'm going to support my friend regardless uh, all the girls start showing up minus Stanberry Nina started pissing me off because she went to the waiter and they're asking her, hey, would you like any like refreshments or something to eat? And she was like, do you have anything vegan or like vegetarian? And then she's like, you know, french fries, give me french fries. Um, make it happen. She kept saying, make it happen. And I'm just like, bitch, do you not remember where you grew up from? You, you literally said you grew up in the States. Like a damn country bumpkin. Now you want to sit up here like, Make it happen. Make it work. Where's my French fries? Make it happen. Like that's rude as hell. And I always feel like people that are rude to waiting staffs and people that are rude to like people that aren't in like service, like like that's a clear sign that she is a uber bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so she did end up getting her French fries at the at the um, after party. But I was like, you better hope they don't they don't piss, spit, wipe them French fries in their ass crack. Like, you over here being rude, talking about make it happen. Where's my fries? Being rude. Like, man, you don't know what people do with food. And I've seen some shit. What the you don't know what people do with food. You playing around too much. You're going to be waking up with um fucking Ebola, bitch. It's fashion show time. I love that Lisa's husband introduced the fashion show, and yeah, he was just like gave gave homage to his wife, praised her of all the success that she has um, gotten, and I just love that, you know. So Chanel and Lisa are work, working overtime in the back They're over here, like fixing the clothes, like getting everything together, make sure everything is like this needs to be tied like this, this needs to be like this, change the shoes, put on my shoes, those shoes don't go. And I just like that. I just looking at all the models there. I love the, the diversity of the models, and I love how hands-on that she is. It basically shows me that she created each garment by hand or collaboratively, and she knows exactly how she wants these garments to look. And I, I respect that. So when it was time to do the final walk, and Lisa goes out to like you know do the final walk behind all the girls. You look off the um in the back of the stage, you couldn't see. But in the back of the stage, Chanel's just like, just clapping like crazy, and I'm just like, I love that she is like supporting her friend, even though this is not like I'm helping out and this is not my moment. I'm still gonna help my friend out and support my friend regardless. And that's how I am with my friends. Like regardless of if I'm getting any praise or not, I'm gonna help my friends ten toes down. They all know that. And we see the after party, and Nina's still being insufferable. And I could have sworn that Chanel like cut her eye at Nina, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But yeah, 
Nina's trying to defend Stan Bear on Washington Come. She's like, maybe it's because of her wedding plans. They show us seeing her. She in the, um, in the house over here, cheers with her husband, drinking some wine. Like, girl, fuck her. I don't know. So far, it's definitely heating up. Um, yeah, I think I have my favorites. After these episodes, I think I have my favorites. Um, Lisa Milan, Chanel Ayan, and Sarah Madani. I I give it two seasons for the ones I don't like right now. I'm gonna give it two seasons because Nina is still boring. She gives me very much vapid, very much like one level. Um, it's there's no depth. All I know about her is that she is rich. She was a self-made woman before she got with her husband, and she's from Texas and has kids and a wife. That's all I know. Very much one level and maybe it's editing who knows but yeah girl vapid boring that's it um brooks i don't mind brooks brooks is very much in the middle messy but you know i don't mind brooks stanberry i'm gonna give her another shot next season uh, right now i do not especially at the next episode when she's over here getting mad and getting insecure because her husband is talking to another woman it's like girl you're getting insecure if that's your man and you're securing your relationship, no other bitch can shake that. Like, I don't get that. How can you let another woman shake the foundation that, with sh shake your relationship and make you feel some type of way with the man that you lay lay down at night every every night? Like, but I guess, girl, I, he is 27, you are 75, so I mean, I get it. Like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.